Father John, come quickly. Yes, I want to hear the story of Samuel so much. Me too. Hey, look, he is coming. Hello, kids. Were you all waiting for me? Yes, Father. We wanted to hear the story of Samuel so much. So we came here early. Hmm, that's good. Come, let's sit there. Do you remember what I told you about judges in the Bible? Yes, Father. Judges were the liberators sent by God to free Israelites. Very good, George. And can you name any one judge from the Bible? Hmm. Samson was a judge, wasn't he? Yes. Samuel too was a judge. He was the last and the greatest of the judges who ruled Israel. In the history of Israel, only Moses excelled him in importance. Now listen carefully. A long time ago. A long time ago, there lived a man called Elkanah in town called Rama. He had two wives, Hannah and Penina. Hannah was Elkanah's favorite, but she had no children. Penina had children and every opportunity she used to insult Hannah for being childless. Come on, it's getting late. We have to walk quickly. Penina, you look tired. So? I can carry the child for a while if you would like. No, I will carry him myself. Come on, Penina. Shiloh is still a long way off. Let her carry the child for a while. No, I am not going to let this barren woman hold my child. Oh. Why are you being so cruel, Penina? Lord God, how long do I have to bear this shame? Help me, God. Let's eat and rest for a while here. We'll offer the sacrifice in the afternoon. Come on, let's make something to eat. <laughs> Where is Hannah? How would I know? Hannah, Hannah, why are you crying? Uh, what else can I do other than to cry? Even our God has abandoned me. Don't worry, it's all right. Don't you realize that I love you more than anything else in this world? I know, dear. Come now, the lunch is ready. Let's eat something. All right. While they were preparing the meat for sacrifice, one of the servants of the priest came to them. What is that? Who are you, sir? I am the servant of the priest. Mmm, this meat looks delicious. No, sir, stop. What are you doing? That meat is for the offering. You should give the offering to the priest first. You can offer whatever is left to the God. The priests are getting so corrupt here. Lord God, look humbly upon your handmaid. If you would lift my shame and give me a son, I shall dedicate him to your service. Who is that woman? Who are you? What are you doing here? My lord, my name is Hannah, wife of Elkanah. Why are you crying, dear? Please don't misunderstand me, lord. I was pouring out my soul before God. Hmm. Don't worry, Hannah. Go in peace. May God bless you. 
God heard Hannah's prayer and blessed her with a son, and she named him Samuel. Oh, my son, thank you, God. I will call you Samuel. Hannah had waited so long for this child, and she loved him so much. But she remembered the promise she made to God. Hannah was an honest woman, and when Samuel turned five, she took him to Shiloh. Mother? Yes, son. Where are we going? Mm. We are going to Shiloh, where the Ark of Covenant is. And why are we taking this ox? This is an offering to our God. It's getting dark. Walk quickly, Samuel. Coming, father. You, you. Don't you? Don't you remember me, Lord? I am the woman who cried and prayed for a child. Ah, I remember you. You look so happy now. Yes, yes, I am. God answered my prayer. Samuel, come here. Yes, mother. Lord, it was for this child that I prayed. I have made an oath to dedicate him to the service of our God. Hmm, dear, your faith is so deep and your sacrifice is great. May the Lord let his face shine upon you. May he reward you with other sons and daughters. Thank you, Father. Am I not going to see you again? Don't worry, my son. I will come to visit you often. At first, Samuel missed his mother a lot. But after a while, he was glad to be able to serve God in the sanctuary. Samuel? Yes, Master? Come with me. I will show you something. Son, that is the sanctuary lamp. It will be your core to keep that alight all the time. This lamp is so beautiful. Thank you, Master. Hmm. Like this lamp. May your faith shine like this always, my son. In the meanwhile, Hannah gave birth to more sons and every year she made it a point to visit Samuel. Huh? Mother? 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 Ah, oh, Samuel, my son. Mother! How have you been, Samuel? I am doing well, Mother. Master is so good to me. Hey, little brother, you have grown up. Here, take this, Samuel. I made this for you. Wow, this is so beautiful. Thanks, Mother. Hmm. You must keep your life as pure as this white dress, my son. I will, Mother. Master is teaching me a lot of new things and I'm really happy here. It is so good to see you, my son. May God bless you. One night, Samuel was sleeping when he heard a voice. Samuel! Samuel! Huh? Who was that? Master! Master! Huh? Hmm. What is it, Samuel? Master, I heard you calling me. Huh? I didn't call you. It must be a dream. Say your prayers and go back to sleep. Huh? I'm sure I heard someone calling my name. Samuel said his prayers and went back to sleep. But after a while, he heard the same sound again. Samuel. Samuel. Huh? Master? Master, Master, I heard you calling me again. No, Eli, I didn't call you. You must have dreamed again. Didn't you say your prayers? Yes, Master, I did. Don't worry, my son. Say your prayers again and get back to sleep. But, Master, I'm sure. It's just a dream, my son. Go on now. Get back to sleep. All right, Master. But after a while, he heard the same voice for the third time. Samuel. Samuel. Huh? I did not just dream that. Master! Master! 
Huh? Did you hear the voice again? Yes, master, I did. Hmm. Son, go back to sleep now. If you hear the voice again, then you should say, Speak, Lord, thy servant is listening. I will say that, master. Samuel did not realize that it was the Lord who called him. After some time, God called his name again. Samuel. Samuel. Huh? Speak, Lord. Thy servant is listening. Samuel, I am going to punish Israel for her sins. I will carry out against Eli everything I have spoken. Because he has not corrected his sons, I will punish his house. <sighs> <clears throat> Are you awake, Master? Oh, Samuel, come here. My son, what message did Lord give you? Don't hide anything from me. Master, it's... he said... Tell me, my son, what did Lord tell you? God is going to punish your house, Master. No offerings or sacrifices is going to save you. Ah... I knew this was coming. My sons, they are so wicked and cruel. I'm sorry, Master. Don't worry, my son. It was the voice of God. Let him do what he thinks good. From that day, Samuel was held in great esteem as the prophet of God. He accompanied Eli in all his course. But Eli's sons refused to follow the path of God. Master! Phineas, my son, what brings you here? Master, we are being attacked by the Philistines. Our soldiers were defeated at Aphek. Hmm, God is abandoning us. I believe that we lost because the Ark of God was not amidst us while we were fighting. What do you want to do now? Please, let us take the Ark to our war camp. No, this is like testing our God. What you should be doing is to plead for God's help. What? Mind your own business, kid. We adults will decide what to do. Huh? Why are you carrying the ark all the way to battlefield? Is it because you think our God's hand is short? How dare you? Who are you to question the priests? You idiot! Phineas, I think there is a point in what Samuel is saying. Are you supporting him, Master? I'm saying that what Samuel is saying is true. You are doubting our God's power. Huh, you have become old. Anyway, I'm taking the Ark, whether you are love or not. Phineas. Come, let's take the Ark to the camp. Don't mind them. Are you going to take the Ark without discerning his will? Get lost, you! Phineas, please don't. But Phineas didn't listen to Eli. They took the ark to the battlefield. Master, the temple is empty. You shouldn't have let them take the ark. What could I do? You saw them. They would not listen to me. It's been many days now. Did you get any news from them? No, and I'm scared. Master, Master! Who? Who is that? He is the soldier who was with Phineas. Oh, I hope he has come with some good news. Master! <sighs> what is it? Your sons! We lost everything, Master! What happened to my sons? Tell me, what happened? The Philistines captured the Ark and they, they killed your sons. No! Master, no! Hearing about his son's death, Eli too died that day. Philistines took the Ark to Asdod and set it down besides Dagon, their god. But the next day... What? Who broke the neck of our god Dagon? Who did this? Whoever did this must be punished. 
my lord. I think, I think the Ark is responsible. Hmm, that must be true. We kept the Ark in this room yesterday, and today we find our god with his neck broken. Hmm, it could be true. Take this Ark to God! I don't want to suffer the wrath of the God of Israel. Yes, my lord. But wherever the Philistines took the Ark of God, they were struck by severe plague. And finally, the Philistines decided to send the Ark back to Israel. Hey, look! That's our Ark of God. Are those Philistines bringing back the Ark? I think so. I heard they were struck with plague and disasters wherever they took the Ark. Then that must be the reason why they are bringing it back. There comes the Ark! <laughs> God hasn't abandoned us. Come, let's see where they will stop. The people brought back the Ark to the house of Abinabad. Years passed and the Philistines continued their cruelty towards Israelites. God has abandoned us. That's why the Philistines are getting so strong. We are paying two-thirds of what we make as taxes. How are we going to survive? And what about their soldiers? We have to hide ourselves whenever we see them. Hmm. Don't you realize this even now? God is punishing you for your infidelity. Why are you worshipping the idols? Don't you know that it's against God's law? We... we are sorry. Repent and return to God. Gather all people to Mizbah on the seventh day from now. Yes, Master. We will inform everyone. Many people came to Mount Mizpah to hear Samuel speak. But the Philistines too heard about the gathering. They knew it was a great opportunity to kill many Israelites and they marched to attack them. By worshipping idols, you are committing a great sin. Today, you will spend the day in fast and prayer. Mister! Mister! What happened? Mister! The Philistine army is coming! Oh no! We are doomed! Calm down! Don't worry! God will protect us! God, once you saved our fathers from the hands of Pharaoh, now look kindly upon this people and save us from the hands of this arrogant army. Samuel's prayers and he routed the army of Philistines. Oh no! The gods are coming against us! It is the God of Israelites! Run for your lives! Run! Run! They are gone? <laughs> they ran back! Thank you, Samuel. You saved our lives. Master, you are a true prophet. Thank you. I did not. Our mighty God saved us. For a long time, Samuel ruled Israel. As long as the people obeyed him, there was peace and jest in the land. But when he became old, the people of Israel resorted back idol worship. Did you see the army of Philistines? Yes. So strong and disciplined. Those Philistines are getting stronger every day. Ha! Huh. Don't you realize this? They have kings to lead them, and that's why they are so strong. Hmm. What you say is correct. We are weak because we don't have a king. There is only one way out. We need a new king. But where do you think we can find an apt person? Let's go ask the prophet Samuel. 
Sinbad? Will he let us? Huh? We must have a king at any rate. The man took the elders and went to talk to Samuel. Master, the Philistines will soon take over our land. Hmm. Don't you understand? No one but you are to be blamed for this. You had abandoned our God and his commandments. All this talk of God will only lead us to slavery. Yes, what we need is a king who can lead us. Master, see the Philistines and Amorites. They are conquering other lands because they have a king. But listen to me. You are not like other people. Our Lord God is your king. There he is starting again. Was it a king who liberated us from Egypt? Did we have a king to capture the promised land? Stop! Those are just tales from the past. Then what about what happened at Mount Mizpah? Was it a king who saved you from the Philistine army? You saw that yourself, didn't you? If you are not willing to anoint a king, then we will be forced to resort to other ways. <laughs> All right, let me check the will of God. You can come back tomorrow and I will inform you. Huh? Come, let's leave. God, how am I going to control these people? They won't listen to me anymore. I'm getting old and Israel is getting weaker every day. Maybe there is some truth in what they are saying. Hmm. King and army, could it be possible that God is speaking through his people? No, isn't God the king of Israel? Lord, please show us the way. The next morning, when people gathered outside temple gates to listen to Samuel, he made an announcement. Israel, listen, it is God who speaks. I shall anoint a king for you. But remember this, he shall make the mighty men among you as his soldiers and servants, and your daughters will be his wives and maids. He will take over your land. He will reduce you to slavery. There will be no point in seeking help from God after this. What do you say? We don't worry about that, but today we want a king. Yes, what we need is a king. All right then. You shall have a king within 30 days from today. Gather all the Israelites at Mizpah on that day. The story of Samuel doesn't end here. He played a crucial role in the history of Israel. So, did you like the story? Wow! Samuel's story is so inspiring. Yes, George. He wept with his people in their disasters. He prayed for them and offered sacrifices on their behalf. He taught them the law of God faithfully. Samuel was a great prophet. Now, shall I ask you a few questions from the story I told you? Yes, Father. What was the name of Samuel's mother? Hmm, her name was Hannah. Right, Matthew. And Lucy, can you tell me what promise did Hannah make to God before Samuel's birth? She made a promise that if she had a son, then she will dedicate him to the service of the Lord. Very good, Lucy. Hmm, now tell me, what were the two crucial moments in the life of Samuel? I can tell you the first one. Yes, George, tell me. When the Philistines defeated Israel and took the ark, it was Samuel who gave hope and courage to his people. 
The people of Israel listen to him and turn to God. That's correct, George. And who can tell me the second one? Do you know the second one? Hmm. We don't know the answer, Father. Oh, right. I haven't told you that story yet. All right. When people of Israel cried for a king, it was Samuel who appointed a king. And that was the second most important moment in Samuel's life. A king? But wasn't the people of Israel supposed to follow only God? That's true. Samuel was torn between the demands of Israelites for a king and his own faith in God. Even when he appointed a king, he did not fail insist on the sovereignty of God and his authority over people. Now I want you all to memorize this verse that I'm going to tell you. These were the words that Samuel said when God spoke to him. Repeat this with me. Speak, Lord. Thy servant is listening. Speak, Lord. Thy servant is listening. That's very good. It's time for me to leave. We'll meet again tomorrow. Father, which story are you going to tell us tomorrow? Hmm. I'll tell you the story of the first king of Israel, the story of King Saul. Wow, the story of King Saul? Thank you, Father. Goodbye, children. Goodbye, Goodbye Father. Father.